Boom. There you go. There you go, bitches. We're live, dude. How is All right. how is everyone doing today? Hello. Can you hear me, dude? Yes. Can you uh, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Just in case, uh, as you're looking at uh, YouTube, make sure it's yeah, it's muted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So uh, we're back. We're back after uh, a little break, um, and I have an awesome guest. I have a person that I, which art I truly, truly enjoy, and uh, that's Ate Galian. Is, did I say it correctly, dude? Did yeah, I, did almost. I say? Can you can you actually pronounce your name uh, in a yeah. proper way? Yeah, Atti Gailan. Okay, Atti Gailan. So it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Very close. All right, it wasn't a difficult one. I I've I've came across the difficult ones too before. Uh, yeah. And it's kind of like, oh my god, am I gonna make a fool of myself? <laughs> <laughs> but then again, on the other on the other hand, is my name is being fucking. Can, can I try pronouncing it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So. Mache Kuchara. Very close. Very okay. close. Very close. It's Mache. Mache. Oh, okay. Mache. Yeah, Mache. Okay. There you have it. Dude, nice to, first of all, nice to meet you. We actually started a conversation prior to this call, like just slightly, slightly prior to this call, just to, you know, get to know one another. Yep. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a pleasure to, to see you do those dailies, dude. Thanks, and man. I'm just I'm just curious what made made you started that. But before we go into that, you know, I'll just start this conversation with what I usually start with is you know, uh, getting to know you better and maybe okay. maybe understanding a little, a little, uh, how you got into the industry and you know what was your journey, where where it all started for you, how did you end up being at Riot Games, all that all that goodies, you know. Okay. Um. So. Thanks for having me, first of all. Uh, and, oh, dude, you, uh, you, you, you're, wel you're welcome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to go back to the very beginning, when I got my first concept art job, or when I got into the to Riot? No, when you were actually out of hospital when you were born. No, I'm the <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. No, no, no. So I, I, think, I think we can just go over briefly, you know, what, uh, what motivated you to become an artist, maybe in the first place. Because I find it really intriguing and interesting to sort of like learn the different stories of artists and, you know, how how you actually get into like was there was there a, a specific defining moment in your life that was oh my god I want to be an artist or it was like a gradual thing that sort of like a collection of things happening in your life that eventually brought you to that point where you just like oh yeah of course I will be an artist so okay okay. Um, I think so from the very beginning like I think like a lot of people uh, I kind of wasn't drawing when I was a kid uh, I I was like playing shit ton of video games um, and I was I think I was around 20 and you know you reach that point in your life where like I shouldn't keep playing video games all day <laughs> long even, even though it's fun uh, and you have to start becoming responsible so uh, <laughs> I, uh, about it. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't know what to do and like at the time my sister was doing uh, working within law so I was like hey let's let's study let's go to law school and see what happens um, so I went to uni and I started reading law um, it was definitely not a thing for me um, <laughs> but what I did was I started just like in my instead of taking notes I was just like doodling like really really abstract stuff like you know just circles and like cylinders uh without any purpose but like it was so fun uh that i thought you know maybe there's something there you know maybe right. i can just use this and maybe because it's fun just doodling maybe you can do that for a living somehow some way and incorporate games into that as well like how cool would that be um uh, and Shortly after, I started discovering that there's a thing called concept art and that you need art for games, you know? Um, right. Was, so, it, was it an article or like a video or, you know, commercial? I, what, was, what was actually got you familiar with that industry? 
I think it might have been either either a really old magazine called PC Gamer or mm, uh, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, so, and you get like these demos with each each uh, copy. It's like you get to try all new games. Uh, it might right. have been in that one where they shared some art for a game. I don't remember which. Uh, and then you know that triggered it. It's like, oh, you know, there it's a thing. And then I came across conceptart.org, uh, which which was basically like you know. You know, grind, get better, and get a job, essentially. Right. Um, and it was it was an amazing community uh, at the time. I don't know. I think it's died out now currently. Uh, but Maybe back it's still then, there, but it's not as popular as it used to be, at least. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was so good because, like, you know, uh, back then I was 21. Uh, it's like there was no concept art education where I lived. I was living in north of Sweden. Uh, but you had this online forum of people actually helping you, you know, like people telling you, like, you know, you want to draw environments, like perspective is pretty key for that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, values matter. And like, um, so it was, that was basically like kickstarting it. Um, right. Um, so it was just like a lot of hours on my own, just practicing, failing really hard, uh, until I think I had turned 21 mm -hmm. when I applied for uh, uh, an internship in Stockholm for a commercial agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and that internship, it was more the fact that, you know, my parents seeing me just trying to draw for a living. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to convince that it's an actual thing. You know? Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you know, you kind of to make them happy as well, like try another job, even though like the internship at the commercial agency, it was, you know, partially doing some of the stuff I wanted to do, but also not really. Um, right. So I took the job and I moved to Stockholm um, and I had, my contract was basically for one year. Uh, and after that, I really had no backup plan. Uh, and so within this one year, I kind of said to myself, like, you know, during this one year, you have to make it, you know, like there is right. no backup plan. Like you, you have to succeed within this one year to make a living off drawing, you know, no matter what that is, you know, that was the goal. Um, and so I kept like, I think it's probably hardest period of my time uh, in my life. Cause I was like, I think I was sleeping five hours or four hours a day for like six months straight. So just... Uh, Slay, slaying away just like yeah fucking just, every every moment of your life it's like this is this is it i have to yeah. make it happen okay yeah it was uh it was like the, the only thing like i just my goal was just to get better as an artist and make a living off an artist and i just used like literally every opportunity and hour of the day i could into putting into drawing right uh and stuff it worked out <laughs> it, it worked out uh and eventually uh so six months in i thought like you know i still have some more time to get better before mm -hmm. the end of the year but but let's let's apply and see what happens you know am, am i there or do i do i have much further to go um right so i tested the waters i applied to two studios and i got positive from both of them i was like this is this wow. is amazing yeah <laughs> Uh, it's like, hmm, will it ever work out? And then when you try, it's like, shit, it's actually better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, so I ended up getting a job at a studio in England uh, called Atom Hawk Design, mm -hmm. which is like an outsource studio. Um, right. And I moved over there, which was like, this is like a huge deal for me. Like, imagine going from uh, being a intern at a studio where you know you do kind of everything everything from like greeting customer getting coffee prepared in the morning <laughs> to to doing some storyboarding but it was kind of everything to just drawing for a living it was like it was unbelievable how uh, old were you when you moved uh i think i've just turned 22, 22? or i was okay. close to turning 22 yeah okay uh um, was it was it difficult for you and your family to actually you know um like, hey, I'm actually moving to a different country. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit like, because I think at some point they wasn't sure it was like, you know, I was going to always kind of stay in Sweden, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
But it was, you know, because they kind of, you know, was pursuing my dream, so they really didn't want to stand in the way. Right. Uh, but, you know, moms, they, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. hard for them to let you go. It is hard. It is hard. I mean, I, I think when I moved out of, uh, when I moved out of Poland, I was pretty much the same age as you were when you moved out of Sweden. Like, more okay. or less. I was in my 20s or early 20s. I was on the, f actually, first year of college where I was just like, fuck college, and I just dropped out. Uh, I, I wasn't just like fuck college and dropped out. I was actually, <laughs> I was actually started made. I, I started making money in 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 you know in art, and I was like, why would I go to college to be electrician and yeah. maybe make a minimal minimal wage back in like yeah. Eastern Europe, where I'm already making way better than any of my friends will ever make from that industry. Yep. You know, it's yep. like fuck that. <laughs> yeah, just moved out, moved out. I was it was difficult. Um, it was it wasn't easy. That's why I asked, like, because one of the things that is it's difficult to understand is how um, how taxing mentally, you know, moving in general is, you know. Yeah. And I think if you move when you're in twenties, that's when you're like, yeah, it's like life's just beginning, and you know, let's just try it and see how it goes. I can always move back. There's always, I think, this 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 cushion that you have. Like, yeah. you're still young enough to, to tell parents, like, oh, it didn't work out, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm moving yeah. back. <laughs> Try yeah, something it, else. Yeah. I think also it depends what stage you're in life. Like, if you're uh, a bit younger and you don't really have anything that's, uh, you know, attachments, like yeah. maybe, you, you you know, you don't have a family or maybe you don't ha even have a pet, it makes it very easy to just, like, pick up your bags and just yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, so, yeah. it does. It does make make things easier. I already had a family, so it was just like um, it was difficult. I actually moved out before I mo moved my family, so I was just like, let me just test the waters if it's something that okay. is actually solid. And I remember I first moved out from my hometown to Warsaw, okay, um, which was already like, oh my god, it's like a couple of hours away from home. You know, I've never been yeah. a person that travels a lot on any of any of that. And then, like, six months later was, you know, man, I'm moving to Germany. What the fuck? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I was well. just like, it was very weird and, you know, very difficult at, at, at a point. But but also, like, I think it was an experience that was sort of preparing me to move to, to States. Uh, okay. Which sort of worked out. Because when I was, when I got a call to move to the United States to work for Naughty Dog, I was just like, I was like, yeah, of course, <laughs> but but of course, <laughs> yeah. I already moved once. I can move again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was like a no brainer for me at that point. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's so twenty two moving. A lot of people would not have balls to do that. Trust me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah. not an easy thing, obviously. But um, so you were working. I, I would assume like fucking going at it, you know, night and day every yeah. day for months on end yeah what did you tell uh, to your friends like your friends are uh, uh calling you, hey let's go for a beer like fuck off I'm, yeah. let's just <laughs> I'm say an I artist have... <laughs> no beer for me <laughs> let's just say i don't have much of a social life uh during the time of Stockholm. <laughs> like <laughs> to put it nicely like i was just like all out because i also it was a brand new town so i really didn't have any friends there since before right uh so I could just like I was just like going all out, all out on drawing, um, and it's kind of habit that stayed with me throughout my career, of, even until now. Uh, and I'm trying to tone it down uh, a bit, but it's it's still kind of followed me that you know, uh, <laughs> just going all out uh, on drawing. Um, I, I think know. a bit of a workaholic, but but, but it's okay. Just just uh, it's just it's just a smidge. <laughs> yeah, just, just a bit. <laughs> Uh, I'm just a smidge yeah. of a workaholic. I don't leave my home. I'm just a hobbit, you know. Yeah. For me, drawing is just, like like smoking. Just living <laughs> under a rock, and um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when 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 I when I moved to the UK, uh, also I I got even the office to the keys because uh, I was being there first every day, and I was last person leaving every day, <laughs> and I was coming in on the weekends as well. So. Uh, Dude, it, that's it, what I did in the beginning at, at uh, Crytek. Like I, I yeah? you know, the office was actually open. I think when we were was back in Coburg, in Bavaria, oh, yeah. I think it was open like most of the day and most of the night. 
um and yeah it's just like i'll be there like all day and then play yeah. games with friends at night you know <laughs> it's just, like, yeah weird. but then family moved and it was still different but yeah. uh yeah 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 dude you, yeah parallels i can see parallels here <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's i think the one thing also about like you know your your work and when you draw when you when you're in your office and you're drawing it's not really the same as if you're home and drawing because like it's totally different mindset when where you're at you know when you're at work you you really don't mess around you kind of just focus on getting stuff done compared right. to home you know you tab down you check stuff maybe you play a game uh and you don't get that much done <laughs> sometimes yeah. uh, so uh, I, I like being in that work environment uh, so what happened after you moved so you 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 got two offers in that agency yeah. and then you know eventually i guess you you picked one and you were you were an actual artist like hell yeah i, I yeah. made it <laughs> was it like yes i made it or yeah, was it, it just was, like, oh, it's it's awesome. Let's see where I where how far I can go from here. Like, what was it, your it, your experience there? It it was incredible. Like first week, I remember I was giggling. I was like, they're, they're paying me to do this. Like I could <laughs> I could do it for free almost. You know, <laughs> like why are you paying me? Um, yeah, it was like I I knew though like going to this outsource studio. I knew it was a stepping stone rather than right. like this is where. I'm going to stay for the rest of my career. Um, so that mindset, I kind of kept going with the attitude I had from Stockholm. Like I was, I was literally like working every single day uh, mm -hmm. and just, just going at it as hard as I can until I think a year. And uh, I was getting uh, freelance offers um, and I was seeing the, cause there's some limitations when you work in an outdoor studio, you know, like, uh, Cause you shift on. Have you ever worked in an outsource studio? Or no, I did get offer to work okay. for Streamline, I believe. That was in uh, Netherlands. It was like I think it was an hour away from uh, Amsterdam. Okay. But it was the same time I got an offer from Crytek. I was like, man, like Crytek, no brainer. I will go there. <laughs> uh, yeah. And both studios were great. I mean, I I knew people that worked with Streamline before, and they were pretty happy. But Crytek gave me like way better offer, so it's just like yeah. yeah, it's it was like a stable job. Whereas with the with the outsourcing studio, it was more like, hey, you're actually gonna get this plus a commission of whatever amount of work you're gonna do, which yeah. in probably in retrospect, you know, um, depending on where my state of mind would be, it could have been better decision. But I think, you know, back back in the days when I was not ready to be like okay, this is what it means to be a, a professional sort of artist. Yeah. Uh, I would probably lose money than make money. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, I did work. Yeah, it's, it's, it did not work, but I got an offer. So I'm, I'm actually yeah. curious, like how it is, uh, how that experience shaped you, you know, working for an uh, outsourcing studio versus now you're a full-time employee over at Riot Games, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's different. It's, it's yeah i'm guessing it's way different so i'm just curious like what is the, what was your experience over there and like how did you feel where do you want to move on from there so um working with the outsource studio like my coworkers were it was freaking incredible like i went from sitting and drawing in my own room alone into sitting in a room with like 15 concept artists just like <laughs> it, it, you can't describe that like uh it it it's was incredible for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was. I still very good friends with a lot of my coworkers. Uh, but uh, the the thing that kind of I felt like was getting a bit, you know, stopping the development is like you kept being thrown from project to project, mm. uh, and style would vary a lot. And often, you know, sometimes you're very excited working on something, but then you end up on something that's not your jam, right? Right, uh, right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> and you still have to do it, you know, uh, versus like working at something like a game developer where, you know, you are on one thing in most cases for a very long time. And if you like it, that's freaking amazing, you know? Uh, yeah. So and getting freelance offers, I got to see, you know, there's a lot of cool things I could work on that I wanted to work on. Uh, versus having like to work on stuff I liked and stuff I didn't like. Uh, mm. So in the end, it, you know, the benefit of freelancing where you can choose what you work on was just outweighing working in house. 
Makes sense. Make a lot of sense. Obviously, when you, yeah, it's like choosing what to work on is, is probably the best way. And yeah. this is what I turned into be sort of like later in my life because I used to be mostly a studio guy. Yeah, uh, pretty much my, most of my career I spent in studios, you know, was where it was Crytek and then later, uh, you know, Naughty Dog. Uh, yeah. It's just like over the last couple of years, I actually, you know, let's actually see what the freelance thing is about. Yeah. And yeah, it can be fun. It also means you have to be so much more <laughs> uh, geared up for it, you know. Like yeah. Cautious about your time and all that stuff. It's like a yeah. whole, whole complete subject we could go over. Um, yeah about that but um but yeah so what actually made you made you so i'm guessing you just wanted to move on you just had that mindset from the very early on like i want to learn as much as i can i'm already enjoying this stuff yeah move on right yeah um so the like i said the goal from the beginning i i kind of could tell like also the city you know it was pretty far in the north of england and i couldn't see myself like living there for a longer period of time oh. Uh, there was nothing tying me to that city or like, you know, it was a nice city, mm. but I couldn't see myself living there. So I kind of knew pretty early on, like I was going to move on. Uh, gotcha. So, so after doing some freelance, I, uh, I decided to move back to Sweden uh, and just work from remote. But then like, you know, the thing with freelance is you tend to, you, you tend to like not, when you get a lot of cool projects, you tend to not say no and you end up working like literally all the time. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, you know, the, that, that kind of became a problem at one point where I was like, sometimes I would work like 26 hours straight and then just crash into bed. Um, That's not fun. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But it's, uh, you know, because like I, I always, uh, I so always try to... You get those fat checks that, that <laughs> when the fun begins, but yeah, you're not that, enjoying that's... those checks because you're like, I got a check. I don't have time to cash it. Work, work, work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's like... Uh, after a while, that kind of also became like uh, something I wanted to step out of because, you know, when you work all the time, it's very hard to find time to create social life or like do other things that work when you just like yeah. constantly like, oh, I got to keep working, keep working. Uh, and when you're a freelancer, you know, you literally decide your own time. And yeah. I, th I think you need to be pretty mature and have the right mindset to do that in the long run uh, without burning yourself out pretty hard. That's <clears throat> that is true. I've, what is what if I mean, if you could compare, because now you you do have experience in both. Like, what would yep. be? I, I guess that would be the hardest thing to do, right? Like, just be sure that you are controlling your time and and you're like mature enough to actually understand. Okay, those are the deadlines. I cannot say yes to everything. Yeah, like all of those things, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I think it's the most difficult thing, uh, be, being selective and being cautious yeah. about your your own time. I mean, yeah. having ability to be a freelancer, working for clients and just picking the projects. Obviously, you have to be at, at you know at the skill level that it will allow you to do that because that's yeah. one thing. The other thing is like being a freelancer and not having offers. That actually, sucks. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's another thing, you know, because like you know, uh, if you if you're very well known it's very easy. You're going get, to keep getting offers. Like at the time, you know, I, I had a few clients, but it wasn't like people were showering me with offers. So I didn't want to say no to the ones I would get as well. Right. Uh, and, you know, so you kind of like, it's kind of always the fear is like, is there going to be a next project? Or, <laughs> you know, you just have to like keep, keep uh keep chugging through it uh, yeah you don't have that anymore i mean i'm, I'm guess i'm pretty sure now as you're full-time you don't yeah. have that anymore but even like when you were still freelancing you, you, you i guess you still had that even when you're you knew like man i'm i'm doing great but yeah. it's still like there's something in your head so sort of lingering like fuck like tomorrow i might not be doing that great yeah but yeah because that anxiety yeah, because you you can't tell when the next person is going to email you. It's just unpredictable. Uh, yeah, but I think I think like for me, uh, I'm way more mature now. If I were to freelance again, and I think I could handle it a lot better and not work mm. all the <laughs> all the time. Yeah, uh, so. yeah, it's difficult to say. I f I think the most difficult thing to do is to say no. Like yes, it's like yes. as a freelancer, that's what you learn the quickest, and it's not like. Sometimes you might not be in the in a place where you, you can say no, but yep. sometimes you just like you should. But because like, what if you get an offer 
that sucks so bad that you know yeah. it's a ripoff and you don't want to spend time on it. You know, if you can swing it, don't do it. Like, don't yeah. spend time on working on a project that you know it's going to fucking exhaust you. Spend time on, yeah. the, you know, doing something else, uh, you know, building your portfolio to be better. Spend yeah. time learning, all that stuff. Yeah. 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 So so you were in Sweden when you when you went back to like like actually freelancing instead of Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How many years was that for you? Uh I think I freelanced for around 2 years, two and a half maybe. Okay. Um and it was during this time like um we started a challenge among it was a bunch of freelance artist friends and we had like a challenge called uh super friends uh where you know what i remember this uh phrase seeing some it somewhere yeah it was it was super fun like we would give each other a topic we had like a skype group um and you know you just give it if we get it we agree on a topic and you have one month to push on whatever you want to do and i learned a lot from doing those images like i think probably among my biggest growth was doing that uh which also kind of like led me to the path of riot because one person in that group who I didn't know at the time, uh, he, he just wrote one day, like, is there anyone who's open for contract work, like environment concepts? We really need one. Uh, and I was the only environment artist in the group. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I can do some. <laughs> if you think it's a match, you know, feel free to let me know. And I just send him the portfolio. Uh, and that's how the riot thing started rolling as well. So, yeah, there you have it. <laughs> you know, a lucky just, draw. Yeah, it's just you know sometimes just gotta be in the right place at the right time. Uh, yeah, that's what I that's what I like to say or like to hear. You know, like there's, I mean, you can say it's a luck, like it's it's you're lucky to get there, you're lucky to get here, uh, but it's like you can be having a draw of luck to have an opportunity to show up, but then yes. you have to be prepared for it. Like if you're yes. not prepared, it doesn't really matter if the opportunity is there because you're not going to see it in the first place or you might yeah. see it, but you're not prepared and you're not going to take advantage of it. So yeah. all you can do is don't rely on the lack, on the luck, yeah. but just um, yeah, be prepared. Yeah. Be prepared. Just, just be, <laughs> just be ready for when the opportunity shows itself. Yeah. And, you know, then you just try and see what happens. Um, and that's from there, like, I just started doing freelance work for Riot. Uh, and uh, we basically did two contracts, which were 65 days. Uh, mm -hmm. And then after that, they said, like, you know, we want to bring you over to the States, but it's uh, very complicated for visa. So you're going to have to work one year full time, but remotely in order to be eligible for this visa. Uh, so, and at the time I had just met my wife uh, or my, not my wife at the time, but a girl uh, who's my wife now. And she was living in Croatia. So I ended up moving uh, over there for one year while working oh, for okay. Riot. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. It was, it was, it was pretty incredible. Like um, that, that really changed also like spending time with someone, uh, you know, uh, who is very important to you also started changing how I would draw stuff, you know, mm. uh, it, it just completely changed the way I do art, um, gotcha. to the better. Is that where your, you know, your daily started like the, the daily yeah. paintings? Yeah. That's, that was in uh, Croatia, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's when I, when I, when I started doing the, the working for right from there, it's like, uh, cause I would have free time, you know, like I, I do work and that has some extra time. And, I like in the beginning I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to do like an awesome painting every two days is uh, every two weeks. <laughs> it's going to be that. a great, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a great illustration. I'm going to make it the best I can. And then like, you know, one month in it's like, I have, I, I keep scrapping everything cause I have, you know, there's nothing tying me to finishing it. Right. You know, it's my own work. Uh, and there's no commitment to it. Like, you know, I don't have to show it or I have to finish it. So what I ended up doing is like, I always keep like, okay, I'm going to make it better. I'll start over and nothing gets done, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. And my wife at the time, she's like, why don't you post, uh, do one image every day for 30 days and post it, you know. doesn't matter if you finished or not. You just do it for 30 days and you post it. 
Uh, and if you like it, just expand upon the idea. And that's kind of where like sketching regularly came from. Mm. That's a that's a good approach, man. Like yeah. having like a smaller goal, which starts like let's just do something for, yeah, thirty days. See yeah. where it goes. Post whatever yeah. we have. Like if it's just unfinished sketch, just call it work in progress and post it. Yeah. Let's see if we can like you can get excited about this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a better approach than I did, where I was just like, oh, I'm gonna fucking do it every day for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's quite the commitment <laughs> and then you know and then you quickly realize like oh my god like but i want to do this now instead yeah yeah and um yeah yeah i, I i'm trying to f i'm trying not to sound like i'm having excuses but uh, no 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 matter how much you're gonna try it's gonna sound like yeah you, you just you're just drawing excuses there dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, but yeah uh, it's hard. It's hard. Like uh, I noticed that as well. Like even during thirty days, it's like there's always something happening that's like just pulling you away from your computer and your free time, yeah. and like still trying to get stuff done. It's it's super hard, you know. Uh, you're, you're familiar with Beeple, right? You you know who Beeple is. Is it an artist? Yeah, Mike uh, Win Win Winkleman. Beeple. B e e p l e. Just go on no. the Beeple, like Beeple, B E E, uh, P L E, uh, dash crab dot com. So this oh, guy, yeah, this guy, uh, my God, Mike. We're actually gonna have him on Twitch stream uh, very soon over at Learn Square Twitch. Uh, okay. He's gonna be. We're gonna be doing sort of like a ten year anniversary of his every days. Uh, okay. He did exactly that, but what you're doing, but for ten years straight. <laughs> Holy shit! Every fucking day. So oh my he's god! Like, he's he's a godfather of, of <laughs> the dailies, I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a difficult thing. You have to have a right mindset. It, I mean, yeah, that guy. No matter if he was on vacation or whatnot, he would take his laptop and do something with it. Still, yeah. And it's just like fuck. Like I don't have, dude. I I wish I had balls for that kind of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. Yeah, ten years, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. So that's why, you know what? Because like when I saw your posts, uh, I think I saw your post for the first time on the Art Cafe group on Facebook. Um, but then I also like, oh my God, like this guy is off the hook. You're like I gotta fucking, fucking have to follow him. And one of the one of the cool part was just like not seeing you, not only seeing you do those sketches every day, but also seeing like the variety of things you were drawing and also like trying to play around with the styles. And yep. see how it actually improved over over time, believe it or not. You know? Yeah. It's like I remember your first sketches and those recent ones, including the one we used for the banner of this of, of this uh live stream. Yeah. Uh which is just like, dude, it looks freaking like a like an anime frame, like straight up. <laughs> and it's just like and it's just a sketch. Like, holy crap, it's so awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's it's because uh, like the goal uh, after I did the thirty days, the goal is to try for a year. Uh, mm. And you know, if you're gonna sketch something every day for a year, you have to like, uh, you have to try stuff you never tried before. Uh, right. And and the goal was like, you know, I wanted to do it for a year, but I also had a purpose, which was like pushing storytelling, uh, which is something I. You kind of always think about it. Yeah, I gotta push story in my images, but like un until you like until for me, I really like, you know, really think of like interesting story, maybe more subtle stories, like things, slice of life or something like that, and try to tell those. Mm -hmm. uh, it really clicked for me from that point on uh, to push more story. It's a feedback I've gotten in the past, but like I never fully understood it until I tried to do it every day for a year. Yeah. It's it's not only difficult just to be focused to actually do it every day, but also like not run out of the ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a bit tricky. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you just you just pull inspiration from whatever you can find, you know, things yeah. you see outside, books, uh, articles you read online, or just inspiration from other artworks. Yeah, I mean, as as long as you're practicing, it's it's always going to be sort of like a natural progression where. You know, you're going to start with something that might not necessarily be that that awesome or just like, oh, yeah. my God, this is like the lamest idea ever. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, at least you're doing it. 
Like that's that's yep. the point of it. Like it doesn't really matter if it's lame or not. Eventually, if you do it enough, you'll actually come up with an idea that's worth a while, you know, and and it's gonna be something really cool. And that's what yeah. I like. I personally do. Like sometimes I get comments like, "Oh, it looks like this. It looks like I, I, I literally don't give a fuck what it looks like. I'm trying yeah. something, you know. <clears throat> it's just like, and that's that's the approach that I I figured out is the healthiest. Where it's just like, hey, it doesn't really matter. What what matters is that I'm trying something, and and my goal for this specific thing is A, B, or C, you know, and yeah. you know, whether it's just keeping the consistency, like you, you you've been doing with your sketches, or you know trying new styles, or you know coming up with new ideas, getting better at storytelling, like all of those things is just a practice, and you, how do you get there by practicing? Yeah, it's as simple yeah. as that. How long do you yeah. plan to do it? Like, do you do you still continue doing it every day? I I, I see your posts almost every day, uh, but I still I still see see you doing it. I'm just curious. Like, are you are you just like planning like, oh, let's do a ten year thing now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, not a ten year thing. Uh, <laughs> it's now uh, since I finished the the every, uh, 365 challenge where I did it every day. I I don't do it every day now, uh, but I try to be as active as I possibly can because I feel like. Uh, I, I get away. I get a lot from it. Like you know, it's very satisfying for me to like have a crazy idea. You know, even doesn't matter how ridiculous it is. If I can mm -hmm. capture that, that's it's just a rewarding feeling to just you know, here's a ridiculous idea I thought of. You know, and <laughs> what do you think? You know, uh, it's it's just fun to to capture ideas that you probably would just like think about and then just leave it. To have it like in a 2D format is something you can always come back to later and. Maybe yeah. expand upon it, turn it into something else. You never know. Well, the cool part about it is, is just like you have so many sketches now that you could easily take like, hey, I want to fucking build this in 3D or let me try yeah. and, you know, finish it as a, as a big, awesome illustration. So, yeah, like it just gives you so much room because now like even though I can run out of the ideas, well, let's take this and finish it, you know? Let's take that yep. and make something better out of it. Or like, like, what if I completely change the style of, of this particular image and, you know, it's already something new and you're learning yep. at, at the same time. So um, I was curious, because I've been painting uh, as we were talking all this time, because okay. uh, I saw your you, you know your screen, but it was mostly Firefox or, uh, you know, <laughs> uh google so if you want to share anything just let me know i'll switch screens uh, okay if you if you want to share any images or paint okay. or whatever whatever you want to do dude it's up to you no pressure no pressure whatsoever right. only okay. twenty thousand people asking no i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> uh, um but yeah it's uh, if, dude i could not have more admiration for you know for an effort like yours where you really spend um a significant amount of, amount of time of your of your life because let's face it a year of time and doing it every day that's an achievement like if, you, if someone is saying like it's not an achievement then fuck off try to <laughs> try to do it yourself yeah <laughs> so yeah. I, I have a big admiration for that and uh, especially because I, I failed it <laughs> i tried to do it i was like fuck that i'm not gonna do it <laughs> yeah it, it, it's a lot harder than you think you know like oh, yeah. like i said there's gonna be those days where you really can't but you just have to force for, force a way yeah. to do it, you know? Yeah. Like, I even, I've done it like, you know, I've done days where I avoided sleeping that day in order to finish it. And like, I've done it days when I've gotten married, you know, when we've been traveling to on holiday, you know, I, there's always like a bit of time you can fit in during the day where you just sketch something. Right. But don't you wish it's like, you know, you're on the beach and, you know, it's fucking honeymoon and it's like, Oh, baby, let's go fucking. And then, like, no, 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 I have my daily. <laughs> but you make sure you do it before that. You know, you do it. You wake up earlier. And you just get it done, so you can like, you know, do do whatever you want during the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of pressure for sure. But yeah. I I think it's. I guess it's like with everything. It's just like over time, when you do it enough, it's just like it, it will be eventually a, a rewarding thing to do. You know, like damn, like I've did it for a year. Holy crap! Like that's an achievement. I never, yeah. I never thought I'm gonna do that. And then you can set up different goals and see where those go. Yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty darn rad, dude. So what is yeah. next for you? I mean, I know right now you're at, over at um, Riot Games. Yeah, just slaying over there. 
Uh, how how do you like working for Riot? Um, it's pretty awesome. Uh, like, you were at the campus, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's have you been there? Oh, of course. I've been oh, there okay. <laughs> I I worked with Yuzun from the from uh you know Yuzun Yuzun Kang, um, and I I also met with the um Eduardo, uh, okay. Eduardo Gonzalez. Yeah. Do you work I with don't... him or you work on the on the on the game part? What do you work uh, on? I work with Trevor Claxton, if you know him. Oh yeah, of course. I've met with yeah. Trevor. Yeah, he's I a work. good guy. I, yeah. Maybe I should get him on the on the show. See what's yeah. up. I've met him uh, when I was uh, over at Riot Games for the first time. I've yep. met him. I've met him there because he was uh, like he was there. It was Kenny Carvalho and and then him sort of like giving me a tour, and then okay. met with Eduardo. Actually, Eduardo is going to be on the show pretty soon for you guys. Eduardo is the visual development director over at um, Riot Games, so we'll, t we'll talk about that a little bit, if, if, if he's going to be cool with that, obviously. <laughs> That's awesome. But, so you work on the, on the game part, or you, like on the you know, new expansions or whatever they, they do, or you work on, uh, on the, the visual development part? Um. I can't go into specifics. No, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. If you don't feel comfortable with answering, I know there's NDAs and shit like that. You know, yeah. I'm just gonna pull enough information to know, but <laughs> but not to get you in trouble. I don't want to do that. So yeah, you you, you well, can completely skip that question. And say, hey, Maché, well, just how about you go fuck yourself? And all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I've been doing a lot of like ever since I joined. I've pretty much been doing environment concept work for a large mm -hmm. portion of it. Uh, until recently, where I switched over fully to doing illustration work. Gotcha. Uh, Have you worked is, any of the uh, on, on any of the skins and characters? Nothing that's out yet. No. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, we, we don't have to go into that. But I was, I was, just, <laughs> I was just curious, you know, because I, yeah. I know like how how different it is and how many things those guys are working on. And obviously, I'm not gonna say a, a peep about what I was doing there. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can tell. So. Yeah, so I, I've been at the, uh, been on on the campus, and for yeah. those who haven't not experienced the campus before, uh, if you get a, if you ever get a chance, like by you know a friend showing you or you know or an interview or whatever, you just do, just don't say no, just go and see it. Like even if you like, fuck Riot Games, I don't want to work with that bullshit company. <laughs> even if you have that attitude, like just, just yeah. I mean, still go and just just check. I mean, just check it out. Just, just go and check it out. It's just gonna be, oh my fucking god, dude! Like, <laughs> that is the most bizarre, not not bizarre in the in the wrong way, but in the really wonderful way, place I've ever seen. It's yeah. like it's like fucking Disneyland. It's it's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like hidden rooms with like fucking handcrafted couches and furniture it's just like it's so good so yeah. it's just like a visual wonder in in, in you know good. some of those rooms yeah it's pretty great it's a it's a it's a great place to be all yeah. i gotta say it's a great place to be so i th i think probably like the um uh, aside from campus like something that i think is super amazing there is like you have so many artists that like you know if you you feel like you're struggling with something, you can really talk to someone who is yeah. probably really good at that thing and just like help you level up, which is something uh, I did not experience before. Right. Dude, when I went there for the first time and I'm walking to the one of the meeting rooms and I'm just looking at, just like looking around, it's like, the fuck, I know that guy. I, I, what? Like, I know, like half of the people I've, I've passed by is like, Dude, this guy is a badass. This guy's this guy's awesome. I've seen fucking films from him. No, this guy worked in this game. Like, oh my god, there's so much talent over there. Yeah. It's insane. Like yeah. you, you you just turn around and it's like, oh, this is probably the best sculpture that you will ever meet. Oh, and there is this awesome concept artist that you know, yeah, that works there. Oh, and that guy was uh, lead animator on one of your favorite animes. Like, who knew? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, it's it's just uh, yeah, it's, it's just a bunch of people, yep. and it's like you can, you can really. I think like you can really grow if if you you know put in the effort and like reach yeah. out to people. Yeah, uh, I've I worked remotely um, 
for a couple of months with you guys. Okay. Um, and I was there on a couple of meetings and I, I, dude, it was probably the most enjoyable, few of the most enjoyable projects I've ever done. Yep. You know, it's like, dude, it's, it's fun. It's creative. I have a lot of like, you know, space to move around and do cool yeah. stuff. And it's a very collaborative experience. Yep. It's like such a fresh air compared yep. to like, you know, and I'm not saying like other projects are done wrong or this is done right or anything like that. It's just like, it's good to have a variety of different projects that you're working on. And that yep. was definitely for me, like big, big change that I, I enjoyed really much. You know, it's just like, fuck, yep. yeah, I needed that in my life, working with those guys and working with Yuzun and, you know, I was there, I think, um, uh, Kang Lee was there too, you know, like all of those yeah. big names and it's just like, oh my God, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I think it's so cool that they also like, you know, if you, uh, they trust you, right? You know, if yeah. you have something that you think is a good solution, something that's going to help what you're working on, you know, if people trust you to, you know, to take, take that vision and then show it to the team. Uh, which yeah. is pretty yeah. cool. I mean, if you get to work there, that means you're you're good. Like, yeah, you're pretty darn good to begin with. Um, and then it's just like from there, it's yeah. I mean, obviously gonna trust you because they know who you are. They hired you for a reason. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's uh it's a great place. And I'm not trying to like, oh, Machi, you're on that fucking Riot Games PP. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I am because I enjoyed the <laughs> fuck out of it, <laughs> and I hope I can work with them again because that would be that's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, yeah, man, it's just like it's it's a good ride. I I'm happy you're there and I'm happy you, you are enjoying it. And campus is fucking amazing. I'm not gonna pull your legs or you know like hey, can you tell me what you do? Like, <laughs> yeah, I I, I understand. I understand the industry. I was just like, oh, let me try it. Let me see. <laughs> let me see how far I can go. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't want to get anyone into trouble. So that's how NDAs work. Like you don't want to talk about things that you should not talk about. But dude, so yeah. what's, what is your, like, what is the next thing for you? Like, what do you want to, are you having like plans, specific plans? Like, oh, this is the next thing I'm going to do. Like another year of this or that, or uh, I'm going to work on my, you know, on project. Like what is... What is what is driving you these days? Cuz you had like from what I'm what I can tell when you started as an artist, you had you and I I hope you still have. You had this drive like fuck, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, you know. Um so there's like two things now that are like uh, a high priority for me. Like I've been trying uh for a longer time trying to develop my own personal projects. Mm -hmm. Uh with a variety of success, like mostly a lot of failure. <laughs> and, it's always uh, like that, dude. Always yeah, like that. A, a lot of like um, just just been trying like it's it is very difficult to make your own IP and like yeah I've I've learned like I I keep trying different ways to you know to find to to push it further, but it's it's very difficult. Um, mm. But that is like. Basically, my goal as an artist is one day to be able to make a living off my own thing, you know, uh, yeah. whether whether it's my own IP or another IP that I've created. It's, but essentially, it's like to make a living off my own thing, you know, uh, working That's for Riot is a noble goal. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone, I think every artist wants that, you know, working for companies is amazing, you know, but I think deep down inside every artist wants to create their own vision and you know if you can make a living of your own vision that's amazing rather than trying to bring other people's vision to life uh i know some 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 people that and like they would never try to pursue their own vision like they just enjoy the process of creating someone else's ideas okay. so much that i was just like fuck that I, i'm 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 cool with that for next 20 okay. years <laughs> there, are, there are people like that, but yeah. I think majority of artists is like what you're saying. It's just like, oh, it would yeah. be so nice if I, because like you are, you started your, you know, your daily drawings because you want to just to explore ideas and also challenge yeah. yourself, but also 
like I, you had absolutely full control over what you're doing and that's at least for me it's like that's the greatest thing you can do just have a yep. full control over over your own work and yep. yeah i can i can totally see why you're you're after that yeah so it's it's uh i've been trying some stuff and it's still it's it's a, it's a learning curve uh but i hope one day it'll be um uh, something i can be proud to present to right. the community um and also like since i switched over to illustration role i've been trying to really level up my uh my craft to mm. make better images because like before i kind of i've done illustration work but i've been mostly like environment concept artist uh, right so i need to like bring, bring up my my work uh, dude your sketches are already a, sort of an amazing you know kickstarting platform for it honestly. thanks man <laughs> it's just like there's I can see like some of the, your sketches are very sort of in, environment driven, yeah. But then you have those story <laughs> storytelling moments. I mean, I should actually pull up some of your work for people to see, because I think uh, I think it's worth a while to show what's going on over there. What's going on? <laughs> uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Oh, there you have it. With that corgi. <laughs> yeah, I corgi. I love corgis. Uh, I have, hope. Do you have corgi yourself? Or no, I I really want to get one. Uh, I think about them way too much. Uh, but <laughs> I I hope one day like because because you know like I don't know if you have do you have a dog? I had a dog. I okay. don't have any anymore. Yeah, um, he passed away. Um, Sorry to hear. Nah, uh, it's all right. I mean, he was, it was his time, so okay. um, that happens. I yeah. probably, if if I ever decided to have a dog ever, ever, which is very unlikely. Yeah. Um, it's not that I don't, don't love the dogs. I fucking love dogs. They're amazing creatures, and they're the your. It's one of the things you realize when you have a pet. Like, yeah, that's that's your, that's actually the only honest person around you. <laughs> like, really <laughs> honest. That you can <laughs> tell everything. You'll just always listen and be yeah. nice to you, and never have like fucking weird tantrums and shit. Um, yeah. But it's just like there's a lieu of you know responsibilities and issues that just impede the mobility and freedom. Yeah. Uh, of your life, it's just like a big commitment. Yes. And um, yeah, it's you know. I. I uh, but if I had. You. If I want to have a dog, I would be Corgi for sure. You yeah. Want to screen share? Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool like to to continue the Corgi topic, like I I agree. Like I think you need to have the lifestyle for for it to work. You know, because yeah. if you get a dog, you know it's from my from the I don't I've never had a dog, but from the information I've gathered and like everything I see is like you need to. It takes a lot of time, you know, and if your lifestyle is where you're working most of the time. It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> if you have a full-time job that you have to go to the office, don't get a don't get a dog. It's going to be a torture for him. Yeah. Or for her. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't get a dog. I'm I'm telling you that's the worst thing that can happen. If you have if you have a cat, it's different cuz cats are not so, you know, attached to humans. Yeah. As they are as as the dogs are. Dogs are really attached to you. And if yeah. you just like always leave like the, if you leave a dog for a couple of hours, it's a torture for a dog. Um yeah. and if you, uh, unless you have a lot of money and can swing having like a daycare for a dog every day, then sure, go for it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you have like a full time job, it's probably not an ideal thing to do. Yeah. Um, there's just a lot of a lot of things that you don't realize. Like it's it's cool to have a dog. It's like oh, it's it's your friend. It's gonna play with you. It's all fun. But then you have to go to the vet every now and then, and it's just like, especially in the U.S. where it's just the healthcare for 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 little for little doggies are is more expensive than healthcare for little humans. <laughs> it's so fucking insane. Yeah. When I came here, so in Germany, for instance, in Poland, it's not that expensive to go to the vet. Here, what? What the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck, people? Yeah. Why it's so expensive here? I don't get it. Oh, yeah. let's let's. So I I went for the to the vet for the first time. Was like, oh, uh, we're gonna do that next ray and do this and like, oh yeah, sure, let's do it. And then I get a bill, eight hundred bucks or thousand. 
What? Yeah. <laughs> what? It's, it's what? Pretty ridiculous. For a checkup? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 yeah, it, it, it mounts a lot. I, I know, um, not directly, but indirectly, I heard stories about, you know, oh, my dog got like broken leg and surgery was like six thousand dollars yeah what the fuck what the fuck like you, you obviously have like health insurance but hey even though if you have doggy health insurance you still have to pay out of pocket and then yeah. maybe you get reimbursed or maybe not it's all up to their disclosure so uh, it's good to have dogs if you can swing it if your lifestyle uh, allows it and you have money for it go for it yeah so maybe maybe one day yeah uh, but anyways, corgis and your paintings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's why it's like a reoccurring subject matter. I also tend to draw a bit of cats because my yeah. wife is a huge cat fanatic. Uh, She's secretly a cat lady. Yeah. <laughs> like 20 years from now, it's like you come home, it's like one cat. Or like a year from now, it's like one cat. Like three years later, it's like, oh, honey, look, I got another one. <laughs> like yeah. Well, six years <laughs> down the road, it's like 20 what the fuck happened <laughs> yeah i think our agreement is if we're gonna get a dog we're gonna get a cat so okay well that's, uh, a, that's a fair agreement yeah it's gonna be plenty by the way <laughs> <laughs> I, I can imagine and also it'd be good for the dog you know like yeah. if, if uh you know if you and uh if you're out of the house at least he's gonna have someone uh um, yeah yeah it's, it's another animal it's like a companion and oftentimes it's, it's not like cartoons where they yep. fight it just depends on the character of of of, uh, of an animal yeah like it's it, mostly they all get along especially if they know each other and they know they're not threat yeah all that stuff but yeah still animals yeah this is uh this is some of the project i was talking about earlier um the one i want to try and develop uh, path is it a path of miranda yeah there you go yeah i've seen yep. this recurring a lot yeah do you yeah. have like a backstory for it uh, I like do. Drawings. Oh, okay, I cool. do. But uh, there's things I, because I tried. So what I tried to do is like uh, I thought this year I was gonna make like six animated episodes uh, with these characters, uh, six. and I did. Yeah, six animated episodes in a that year. That was yeah. That was the plan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as I, as. I, <laughs> But as I try, <laughs> it's okay. It's, I, I realized that afterwards. Uh, make a yeah, making a minute <laughs> yeah. of animation is a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah I was, no, I, you know I'm joking, obviously. Yeah, with my yeah. laugh, but it's just like I, I realized the amount of work. It was like, oh, you're probably gathering a team of animators and producers. They all have that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, so I I was doing it alone. Uh, and, <laughs> and in Photoshop to make it even better, uh, <laughs> I, I managed to do one episode. Uh, but as I did that, I just realized there is too many unanswered questions to fully execute on this at right. this stage. Uh, you want to do and, like fully animated or more like a animated still, so like almost like a a cinematic of of of, of stills and little animation here and there. Uh, so originally I was going to try full on animated, uh, but doing this, like, because the goal essentially is to tell uh, a story and like doing the first episode, I would spend like 12 hours of work mm -hmm. and now get like two seconds worth of footage. Uh, and when you want to tell a story, that is not the most efficient way to go about it. Right. Uh, so I'm probably going to reboot things and try a project more like cinematic stills um mm. i think you better uh sell what i want which is telling their story yeah it, it makes sense i mean i you know riot games does that with you yeah. know their character cinematics and when you have the splash screen there's like the animated sort of you have those animated uh cinematic cinematic yeah. looking illustrations I, that's more approachable because uh, yeah, again like when you said like oh i'm gonna do six episodes i was like fully animated <laughs> like in my head like my god it's so much work uh yeah. even even what you're saying like com even organizing that and making sure it's all working well together and it's like the story is compelling all that stuff is wow it's a lot of work 
even yeah. even that like even just making one episode where you're just yeah. telling any story at all and just drawing yeah. it it's just still it's still a lot of times depending like well if it's a short story it's like one beat maybe it's maybe it's an easier thing to do yep um but yeah well i mean dude all power to you do it go, <laughs> go and do it i yeah. want to see it yeah i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna keep pushing on this i i learned like trying this episode i learned a lot of things which i probably would have not learned otherwise mm. uh, so it was it was very painful to do it uh but i learned so much from it that i'm gonna I've been I've been trying to distill down like how can I approach this further. So, oh, yeah, I'm 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 curious where it goes because I've I've seen this uh, as a recurring theme, and yep. I'm tri- intrigued. Uh, it's it's not your regular you know sci-fi or fantasy or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's completely different, and yep. I like that. I like I I like how you you know when I look at those sketches and some of them just literally look like. You know, stills from you know manga, like or, or uh, anime, which yep. is really cool. I like it. It's very clean and and very very precise. There was actually a question early, earlier on, which okay. uh, was exactly about that. You know, how do you achieve the the stroke efficiency in your sketches? Because when I look at those, it almost seems seems like the 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 brush strokes are only there where they are supposed to be. There's no 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 overlaying of brush strokes. And whatnot? Do you do you consciously pick your brush strokes, or you, you you more likely just like oh I'm just gonna do as much as I can and then cover up like I do? <laughs> um, so like I think uh, in some of the sketches it's it's more efficient the brush strokes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more due to the time or more due to the reason that I often am on such a limited time, right? Uh, that I I I have to be efficient in order to achieve what i want um and i doing like doing the 365 challenge i learned something where i i try to problem solve as much as i can before i even start painting uh, mm. and like try to try to imagine what is the scenario i want to do uh what is the mood i want to get across and if i can answer those questions before i even start painting uh that'll help make That's it even best, more huh? yeah it, it just makes it it gives you some sort of direction uh to start off with, right. That's and a good lo- approach. That's a good yeah. approach. Did you did you ever during that time of doing sketches every day? Did you ever had like moments where you just fucked it up so bad that you had to start over? Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> there, there's some of them which I felt so embarrassed about posting, but like the goal was to share every day. So it's like you know, there's a lot of them. I'd say majority of them are a very bad day, <laughs> you know. Uh, but it's it, it, it's though. It's all learning, you know. Like you gotta, you gotta fail to to learn. Uh, I can I can tell from looking at the sketches that you've done early on versus what you've been posting recently that you're way more efficient. Like that's that's thanks. goes without saying. I, I guess that's your approach with let's figure out, let's think about what I'm drawing and then you know how efficiently I can do it. It's almost like when you're preparing for a job. And you get an assignment, and all right, should I paint this or should I start with like a 3D layout? Like, what yep. should I do? And you're just trying to solve the problem before you even tackle it, yeah. Uh, which can be a, a good idea. And then obviously, you know, a couple of failures along the way, and then you know, having those aha moments where your painting is like, wait a minute, like this is so much easier to do it this way. And then from there, yeah. it just like just becomes more and more and more efficient. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. I th- I think also I try to also super simplify things with my uh, sketches, like just put down enough information to sell the idea I want to sell or to yeah. communicate the form. Uh, any additional strokes, like I always think, is it gonna help uh, enhance what I want to say, or is it just gonna be like look uh, slightly better? Dude, I envy that because I wish I had um, you know an ability to really efficiently and quickly draw sketches without like repeating myself the problem yeah. is i just don't do enough of it you know like i don't yeah. practice sketches enough i'm always being pulled away and doing like oh let's try this new zbrush thing or you know, <laughs> this new render or new this new that it's just like i'm just i'm just trying to pick my battles and see where you know where this this goes but you're definitely 
I like I like I like that stuff, man. It's it's it stands out of the crowd easily, in, in my Excellent. opinion. That's why I, one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on and talk about it because it's just like oh, not only looks cool, not only looks cool, stands out, but also like let's see, let's see what's the story behind it, you know? And it's you know it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Thanks, to me, dude. Um, uh, you ready for some questions? You wanna jump sure. into those? Let's see if we have. I'm pretty sure we have some uh going on there uh what did you study um i guess that was a question way back when we were talking about when you were um learning for the first time uh when you were trying to get into the industry what what did you study the most what 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 did you focus on the most what was it fundamentals Uh, or art styles what was that um for me it was like I, I knew I saw a tutorial at the time where it was like I heard that environment work would get you into the industry quicker, mm-hmm. uh, which I thought you know it could be a good approach because like trying to learn everything at once for me at the time was like holy shit this is not possible you know there's like yeah. anatomy perspective values colors like all of that anatomy itself is a huge deal. Uh, so I decided, like, just just narrow it down. Like, what do I, what is the essential I need to know to create environments? Uh, and that was kind of my fo- starting point. And as I kept, you know, drawing and painting, I kept adding on more information. Uh, but just trying to like keep it manageable in the start was right. how I approached it. So seeing tutorials, did you, did you read any books? Did you pick up like any books that you fo- found, you know, would be beneficial for you or? Just mostly. I, it was mostly like I bought some. I don't know if you remember the conceptart.org had like a tutorial store mm-hmm. way back. Yeah. Uh, and I bought some tutorials from there, which really made things click. Uh, Got it. Got it. So. Yeah, I remember picking up Noman. That was the first thing I picked up. Yeah. Like Noman DVDs. Yeah. And it was so difficult to get them. Yeah. <laughs> For fuck's sake. It was difficult. <laughs> Yeah. Especially when you had no money and like shipping was more expensive than getting the extra yeah. DVD. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really now it's so fucking easy, dude. Yeah, so easy. You just go to Gumroad, then there you go. Yeah, just go Gumroad, find your favorite artist. It's very possible he already made Gumroads, or go and learn Squared and pick up those courses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just joking, <laughs> shamelessly plugging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, let's see what else we have here. Some some of the questions might be scattered. By the way, guys, whoever is listening to this live, uh, you feel free to ask questions as we're still here. There was a lot of discussion going on there. People are just saying how awesome you are, obviously. <laughs> 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 Let's see if we actually have... Sometimes we don't have that many questions, okay. which is which is all right. Um, you know, sometimes... Uh, uh, sometimes it's just, like, so inspiring to see... Uh, to see artists uh, work and just have a discussion. A lot of times we have discussion with, you know, whether it's you or any of my past uh, guests, where a lot of questions are just literally answered as we talk about them and they they never show up. Um, Yeah, I think, uh, so you're going to, I mean, I I, I just continue on my own then. Uh, You're going to, I guess, work on on your project. So do you, like, is your goal to, do it as an animation specifically or it doesn't really matter as as long as you're you know you're having your story being uh your your story coming across like what is your uh, your end goal do you have like a sp- specific goal that you want to also learn something with it or it's more like I-, I really enjoy creating my own stuff as you said that's your goal um uh, and and y- you want to focus primarily on that I th- the end goal is really to tell their story. Like the exact method of doing it, I I haven't found yet. I have a good idea of what I want to try next, uh, but doesn't matter how I do it. At the end of the day, it's like just telling their story in a way that's manageable. Because most likely I'll be doing it on my own. Uh, so like probably going full on animation is not going to happen unless I have a team of people. Right. Uh, to that help makes out. Sense. With that. Yeah. yeah, organizing an animation is a big task. Um, yeah, I I I, I took um, Jorge's uh, class, um, Jr. Jr. Canast class, 
okay. uh, for motion design over at Learn Squared. I was his apprentice. And fuck, it was so difficult. Like, yeah. uh, it, it was an easy sort of... Uh, it seemed like an easy thing. You know, like, yeah. oh, it's just like learning principles of animation and then applying tools to actually make, you know, motion graphics. I actually went with a route of sort of creating an, an animated sort of like f almost a frame by frame. Okay. Like painterly. And things I've learned uh, along the way is just like, oh my God, it's so time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like a completely different, different field. I actually started looking into animation recently uh, just out of curiosity on like how Acura was done, how Ghost in the Shell was created. Yeah. And how Ghibli, Ghibli's films were created. And it's, oh my yeah. God, it's so much fucking work. Yes. And they, they don't do like fucking easy ins and outs and some like in between frames and all that shit they fucking do hand frame by frame scan that shit and put in the computer deal yeah. all the time and it's there's it made made me realize a clear difference between like why i do personally enjoy acura or any of the automos movies so much why i did enjoy like old anime more than i just enjoy new anime Although, uh, I, ha I don't know if you've seen on Netflix, they just dropped the uh, Blame, and then you, uh, I, the, the film. Yeah, I saw it. I haven't had time to check it out yet, but I heard it was good. Oh, dude. It's like, it's 3D, it's 3D anime, basically. Okay. Uh, but some of the scenes are like, holy fuck. Holy shit, it was so <laughs> good. So I'm good. I'm going to check it. Dude, story is simple as fuck, and it's enjoyable. Like okay. I wish films were done that way. I wish I'm movies take... were done that way. That that you have, you remember Alien, the first yes. one. Yes. It's it's a crew that is landing on the fucking planet, and yep. they try to survive. That's it. Now yep. the new stuff that's coming out. I haven't seen Covenant. I figured you know what, I'm not gonna see it because it's probably gonna be a shitty movie. Uh, and I've heard it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard as well. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I I almost feel like they. Because I I actually saw there's this uh, Red Letter Media guys. Uh, they do like uh, Half in the Bag series on YouTube. Okay. They're so fucking funny. And they did like six minute sort of like asking themselves questions about the movie. And it's like, oh my God, is it really as stupid as they're saying it is? Yeah. If it is, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. It's like, I, per, it's like a Prometheus all over again. And I and, liked Prometheus though. Oh uh, my god. Oh, okay, uh, it's let's put good. it this way. Let's put it this way. <laughs> it's 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 a well it's it's a movie that is well designed and yeah. looks beautiful but is so fucking stupid. So uh, sorry. I'm 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 screaming to a mic. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so the honest trailers for that movie tell everything that is wrong about that movie. And that's probably the best honest trailers that ever was ever done too. Yeah. Uh, look, if you're just going to enjoy just like an action popcorn flick, sure. It's yeah. you. I I did enjoy watching it for the first time, just b having that expectation. But it's just like I, I, I. It's hard for me to enjoy. I don't know. It's maybe I'm just getting jaded by knowing how films are done, and yeah. like what goes behind the scenes and and how VFX are looking, and like there's no magic in it anymore. Like oh. Yeah. But of course it's CGI, even though it looks realistic. You know, like for me, it's just yeah. like I understand how things are made. I do, and I, I said it when I was talking about Ghost in the Shell. I do appreciate the amount of effort and work that goes into movies. And to me, it's always, it's probably a lieu of one, two, or or maybe many bad decisions that are just so insignificant at a time. That eventually paramount to a movie that could have been so much better but isn't because of all of those decisions that were made yeah. and it's just a matter of like it's like you know you, you know how hard it is to make a painting to be 80 percent there it's it's probably easy you know 80 yeah. percent there it's like yeah but then the last 10 20 like last 20 percent is like hard but maybe last five percent where you really want to nail it down to yeah. like a nitty gritty details that's a fucking that's like three times more work yeah and that's where if you have majority of the film crew and the people that are involved in the film that have that ability to pull off that last five percent that's how you get, get the great movies yeah. and it's 
it, it, it's very rare it happens very rarely because there's not that many people that do it so well yeah and they and just so happens that every now and then you're gonna have all of them in one place but then yep. they're gonna be scattered so i do appreciate movies but i do you know i'm not gonna pretend that i i love movies or some of them it's just like oh my god that's my personal yeah. opinion, by the way. And I, yeah. you know, it's one thing to work in a movie and work with the director and production designer. It's it's fun. Like in yeah. most cases, movies like I'm, I'm I could be saying like you know Prometheus is a horrible movie, but I know a lot of people that worked on it and they ha- they enjoyed the shit out of it working yeah. on it. And it's it was I'm pretty sure it was a wonderful experience for for those guys and they pulled off pulled off amazing job doing it. It just didn't work out, and I didn't like it. <laughs> it's just yeah, a personal opinions. Yeah, um, but yeah, um, but yeah. I mean, t- we were talking about animation, dude. So <laughs> I actually found out what software uh, you know those companies are using, and you know, one of them, the Ghibli, are almost, and all of the Ghibli movies are almost entirely made on Open Tunes. Yes, it's called Open Tunes. Yeah, I. I I pulled pulled up that software. It's free, by the way. You can download it for free. It's basically fucking bare bone. Put animation together with sheets, and scan shit to it, kind of software. Yep. I mean, yep. if I if I would dig into it more, I would probably find like, oh, th- for animation specifically, yeah, this is good. This is good. This is good. I'm not so well versed in that universe, obviously, so I cannot tell. But from the drawing perspective. There's no fucking pressure yeah. sensitivity. All of yeah. it is frame by frame. It's fucking oh my god! There's so much work that goes into it. That so. that's why I realized as well. Like doing <laughs> the anime, like because I, I a lot of people recommended me to try out animation programs, uh, and I did. But like I always notice, like they're terrible for drawing in compared to Photoshop. But like yeah. they have all these great features that allows you to animate. Uh, so for me it was like a decision where they're like great drawing software with shitty animation features or <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, shitty drawing uh, program but great animation features Dude, you can you can do pretty decent animations with photoshop alone yeah like, you have the timeline it's just uh, it's just gonna be a lot of work it's uh, you yeah know, you have to expect it's gonna be frame by frame and frame yeah. by frame is the most difficult way of doing animations yeah. you have to think keyframes and then you have to uh, account for ease ins and ease outs yeah and be really careful how you do them because the, because everything is frame by frame you might be outputting so much work that it might be discarded because like the timing isn't right and yep. the only way to fix it is to move frames and, and fill in for what's missing yeah um it's not like oh i can just like in you know in after effects you can just you just move a slider or you yep. move the curve a little bit and animate <coughs> for you like it, yeah. that's not frame by frame. That's not how animes are done. Like the good ones. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's been it's been an eye opening experience for me for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I realize after you try to animate yourself, you just appreciate like the masterpieces so much more. You're like, holy shit! How did they do this? You know? Yeah. It's just unreal. Um, we have some questions actually. As okay. we were talking about, um, blah, 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 blah. would you rather start with separate values than add colors with color adjustment layers, or would you rather just pull, uh, just put all the colors immediately? I know there's like different schools of working, so yeah, um, it it really depends like what the end purpose is and the time limit I have. Like, say I have two hours, which is what most of the sketches are then starting with black and white is really going to it's going to slow me down because the end product's not supposed to be finished so if the if i can jump in with painting the values might not be fully accurate but it will be mm-hmm. enough to sell the idea uh, but if i have something i know i'm going to have a lot of time on i would definitely like plan it out much more ahead of time even like starting with a line drawing and just like you know just build it up slowly it yeah. really depends on like the time limit, the time you have at hand. Yeah, makes sense. There's another question that I'll answer for you because I think I I I I'll, I have an ability to answer based on what we discussed, which is how did you get so good at uh, painting light? And I would say practice. <laughs> would yeah. I be wrong? Would I be wrong? 
No, that's <laughs> accurate. Uh, I paint a lot from life as well. Like I, I've done just ridiculous amount of like still life. I actually switched over to doing a traditional lately. Uh, oh. I don't post much of them, just here and there a few, but I do it a lot uh, to keep to keep improving, basically. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense, and it's a lot of practice. Uh, yeah, we actually I had an episode with Aton. Uh, okay. Over at Twitch, uh, Learn Squared Twitch, and I believe it's available on YouTube already. Uh, so go watch that because we actually talk about lighting uh, and okay. references and all that stuff and painting from life. So uh, that would be a good resource for you guys to to check out. Um, would you say being in LA has helped you? Has helped in terms of connections? If you are, uh, if your art is good enough, do you guys think artists in LA have an advantage over artists elsewhere? Um, I would say yes, because like you have so many studios in the nearby area, which naturally allows for more jobs, uh, yeah. compared to like where I grew up, uh, there is not a single studio, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, you're trapped with what you have. Um, yeah. It's much more difficult for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, I would, yeah, definitely. I mean, you have more studios, but there's also more competition. So your skills, yes. skills level has to be higher. LA is very, 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 very expensive place too. Yeah. So, uh, you're like, if you live, I don't know, Poland, Croatia, a lot of places that are not a, a central hub of entertainment, yeah. you, you most likely going to have much lower, uh, cost of living. And if you're good enough. You're gonna be doing way less work and still living like really, really good living. Yeah. Whereas in LA, you're gonna fucking grind yourself to death. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're I, gonna have I, best jobs, but not best pay or pay yeah. for for the cost. So, yeah, I think like you know, unless you're going for a full time job, I don't see why like you know you'd move to LA. You know, if you can just yeah. work remotely. Yeah, living in moving to US in general or moving to LA, it's unless yeah, it's like you're moving for a job that you're really enjoying and you really yep. you are really after or you want to change your lifestyle and you're just really after that specifically. And being in LA is like there's a lot of artists here. Yeah. It's good to have artists around you, especially really big ones and prolific ones because that automatically makes you want to be, you know, more active. Yeah, that definitely helps to be around great people, and there are a lot of them here. Yeah, uh, but it's also like it can feel like a rat race, and that's not a yep. that's not a healthy thing to do. So, um, yeah. Uh, have you ever tried drawing in VR? No, uh, I've seen some people do some crazy stuff with that. So it's definitely something yeah. I want to try. Yeah, I want to try it too sometime. It's just yeah. like there's so many things I want to try and not enough time doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Have Have you seen some of Jama sketches? Oh yeah, it? of course. It's Jama it's is, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I knew I knew Jama is a ridiculous person. Where I had uh, a chance to work with him for the first time, and that was on the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, over at MPC, and I was like, "Who the fuck is that guy? And <laughs> why he's so good?" <laughs> yeah. He's... I got like some PSD files, like uh, Photoshop files from him, and uh, I was like. I don't even understand how you organize that shit, but it's I'm I'm impressed. Like I would never <laughs> think about half of the things that he was doing in those files. So yeah. that was like, yeah, this guy this guy is onto something. So yeah. Uh, again, shameless plug. He did a class for us over at uh, Learn Squared, and you know, you, you, your students can testify. Just look at the students' work. Yep. So someone actually asked about Feng Zhu schools, uh, Feng Zhu uh, school, and I would say the same thing. Look at the students' work. And talk yep. to the students. Like, talk to a person that actually went to the school. Don't ask an instructor what, what they think about the school because in most cases, it was like, oh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Because usually they make money out of, you know, we do make money out of doing what we do, obviously. Yeah. So we want to make, obviously, money and make uh, students happy by doing it, by, uh, you know, and we're doing it. But, um, but you're always going to have an honest opinion from an actual student who will tell you, well, this sucks. Yep. You know, or this is great. So that's how you get an honest opinion about a school. And I can tell, like, for instance, the guys over at Brainstorm, that's the only school I can say anything about um, because I had direct experience with them or CDA. I know CDA is good because I know Kevin is not only a great teacher, but also had a, um, 
Kevin workshop. Kevin Chen? Kevin Chen, yeah. Oh, I had a workshop amazing. over there. And, you know, uh, from my limited experience with, with them, uh, I think they're great. Same with uh, Brainstorm. You know, I know John Park and James Paik really well. And I also know students that, I mean, Learn Squared has shared students with Brainstorm on many occasions. I only heard only positive things about Brainstorm. I've never heard anyone complaining about it. Maybe I haven't looked in far enough, but I can tell Brainstorm is great. So uh, same goes with like Grant Warwick's uh, Mastering CGI. It's not really a school. It's more like courses done by Grant, but I've take them, taken them personally and I can, I can tell you that they're fucking awesome. You know, like if I would think about V-Ray, that would be a first place to go, in my opinion, at least. Um, let's maybe go through maybe two more questions and wrap it up. How about that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you think exercise, uh, do you exercise to prevent hand back injuries? Uh, I one. should, I should, <laughs> I should. but I don't. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's something I really should do, uh, but I don't. Mm, you should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have, I have no excuse for it I've, either. I've, 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 I used to do jujitsu. Now I'm like yeah. I'm so far away from the gym that I used to go to, and I don't really I don't really really feel compelled to try a new one. Yeah, it's just like when you go to a jiu-jitsu gym. I don't know. There's something about like loyalty. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I'll try a, a one that is close by. Yeah, um, I th but I think so. You should definitely like exercise. I do hand stretches regularly, mm. uh, but like there is no excuse for not working out as an artist because yeah. you're gonna get injury like pretty pretty quick when i'm super busy i'll still go for a run at least once yeah. or twice a week like that's yeah. a minimum that i can do for myself go for a run at least you know go like three mile run at least yeah. once or twice a week um i know from personal experience that not working out actually makes you feel like shit and being yeah. physically tired makes you feel wonderful it's kind of weird but it is what it is yeah it definitely you know uh works wonders on your brain and your creativity like so many times when you hit the block like you hit the creative block when it's like fuck i don't know where to go from here go for a walk or run yep. or an exercise whatever like it, you you it, by the time you come back you're gonna have millions of ideas like yep. why do we come come up with the greatest ideas when we're taking shit or during the shower you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or both <laughs> taking shit in the shower <laughs> and then coming up with the most wonderful idea yeah <laughs> um do you have to pay do you have to uh, uh, do freelancers have to pay uh for self-employment taxes yes they do uh and maybe one more question let's see let me actually I think for taxes also probably should talk to your local tax office yeah yeah it's yeah, like yeah. definitely talk to a tax professional but you have to pay taxes. There's two certain yep. things in, in life. You, you're going to pay taxes or you're going to die. There's yeah. those, those two things going to happen for sure. Yeah. Uh, do you incorporate any 3D or photos in your work? No. That's a good one. Oh, that's Not cool. A... That's cool. Yeah. You obviously uh, look at references, though. Uh, yeah, I use references, but I... It's more of a personal preference uh, that I simply do not want to do that. I Ever since I left the outdoor studio, I basically stepped away from it completely. Um, That's since, cool. Yeah, it's just, you know, I have, there are certain things I want to achieve as an artist. And like using photos or 3D, I think for me would like, it would hide things I should deal with. Uh, and I Got never it. use their work either. Like... I just always paint. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. I mean, for strictly painting and the way you want to approach it and yeah. clearly works for you. So there you have it. I mean, I know I, I, I guess this question might be asked because I personally, during those uh, live streams, I talk about how important it is to learn 3D and understand where, where the industry is going and, yeah. and you know, and knowing that, but uh, you know, on numerous occasions, I also I, I hope I mentioned this. If not, then my apologies. Is there's still room for painting? There's still room for drawing. Uh, it's still there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're a good example. It's working out really well. Um, it, you know, there's a couple of other artists that do it really well as well. Like Ross Tran, for instance, he's only painting. 
Yeah. He's actually do he does photo manipulation, but he does it in a very fun, fun way. Like he will yeah. turn himself into like Sil Sailor Moon or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah <let's> see <laughs> That's so funny to watch where he will take like a photo of a pizza and make like a I don't know, fucking frozen <laughs> out of it. Uh, yeah. it's so funny. But he's an entertainer entertainer as well. <laughs> and it's like a different path that he, he's choosing. In video yep. games, depends on the studio, and some studios are going to be uh great for strictly uh painters some others yep. will require you to do 3d in film yep. i would say in film you kind of want to be on that 3d train like if you want to yep. work in films you, you have to start learning 3d uh sooner or later it will be a must and when you look at a lot of artists like steve berg is a great example he's obviously 3d uh ben proctor back back in the days when he was uh, an illustrator he was doing a lot of 3d uh, Dylan Cole, now he's production designer as well. He used he used to do a lot of 3D. Steve Messing, like all of the top guys are 3D guys. And even John Park, who's almost primarily 2D, started learning 3D because he knows, you know. Yeah. So, um, yep. yeah, dude. I, I, yeah, go sorry. Ahead. Just to just to add to that, I think it's also just being aware where you want to go with your career. Exactly. You know, like, exactly. Uh, just keeping that in mind and seeing like what's required to do that. Like for instance, working at Naughty Dog is very different than working at Riot, what they would expect from artists. Yep. That is true. That is correct. Um, cool, man. I was so glad cool. to have you. We had like a almost two hour long conversation. At <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> chat. Time is flying. I hope I didn't take more time than you had scheduled for this. So no, it was really fun. <laughs> Yeah, I've learned a lot, dude. It's it's it, you know I've been a big fan of your work and you know continue to be, and I'm curious where you're gonna take that path of Miranda or whatever else you're gonna come up with. Uh, Thanks, man. You know it's it's been pretty pretty great ride. I was so excited when I when I saw you like oh dude that that dude made you know the full year full cycle. <laughs> so um, <laughs> and I'm glad I, I I see you continuing doing that. So that's awesome. Cool. That is great. All right, guys, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, just going to obviously shamelessly plug some of the things that was going on on my end. I started selling some of the prints from Showtime. You guys can go to kuchara.com slash store. That's K-U-C-I-A-R-A dot com slash store. You'll find it there. And also the new Art Cafe mugs. They're slightly cheaper than they used to be. They come up uh, quicker. That new service is awesome. I've been using it. I've been trying it, and it's awesome. Uh, there's a price for if I order it myself, and there's a public price too. Whoops. <laughs> uh, so that's that. Also, if you like the show and if you enjoy um, what I'm doing here, and you like, hey, like, I enjoy it so much, I want to throw dollars on the screen. There is a way for you to do it, obviously too. If you go on Patreon.com. Um, let me actually pull it up as well. Patreon.com uh, forward slash Art Cafe TV. If you go there, you can support the show. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. If you if you like, do it. Then uh, that's I'll be grateful, obviously, because it just helps to to build the show better. Uh, it allows me to get better equipment, make it more entertaining, get more guests. Uh, the devote more time uh into it as well so cool all right let's wrap it up here guys uh it was awesome stream man i would like to have you, you back sometime and, yeah you know, for sure where you at uh, in the future all right uh, other than that you guys take care and i'll see you next time there's some couple of really cool guests coming up it's just a matter of me trying to get the schedule tight so we'll get there all right guys till right. the next time bye 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 <laughs>